So then, Ireland 2, Gibraltar 0. We'll hear from Gary Breen in a moment. First, Mick McCarthy. Were you frustrated at the performance, the Irish performance? Uh, not really. I was just frustrated at the game. I'm not frustrated with the lads. I, uh, I was a little bit frustrated in the first half. I don't think we even stopped them playing. They had a little bit too much for, for my liking. Uh, second half, they didn't. I can't remember them getting in a... Did they get in that 18-yard box? I'm not sure. You might say, well, they shouldn't. But I mean, at the starts, we've had a 30-odd shots and amazing crosses. We've just been profligate, wasteful. Maybe the final pass. Maybe I should congratulate them for being so belligerent and stubborn and defending well. But we were pretty wasteful. So, we work on it, we'll continue to work at it. But I'd have took 10 points beforehand. Is it, um, is it one of those games that Mick where in such a tight group you might regret not racking up a few more goals at the end of the campaign where goal difference could end up going against you? I think you're all very disrespectful to Gibraltar actually, I really do. Talking to me beforehand about we ought to be over a festival of football and score five past and whatever it is, I was never thought that's the case and I'm sorry for being so pragmatic that I'll take the points. Yes, we, we could have scored more. You know, but we haven't. So, if I end up regretting it because we haven't put in some debates me on goal difference, I'll tell you then if I regret it. But this moment in time, I'm happy with the ten points. Do you think we're step near a qualification after that? You know we are. We got ten points. I'm amazed actually at the uh, I think the at the reaction to just winning two 0 I went to the dressing room and they, they got the feeling, it was, I said, hold on lads, you know, you've had a great three weeks, we've won two games, oh, won a game and drawn a game, we've got four points, that'd have been, we'd have all been happy with it. Would they have been happy before the start? I all said yes, so, I'm sorry lads, I ain't going to be miserable about it. I'm happy, I'm off on my holidays with ten points. But well, didn't that tell you about the players that themselves, well, they're happy to get the results. They still would like to maybe themselves connect with play a little better, and you probably like to play a better as well. Yeah, well, I'm just saying to you how many crosses and shots that we've had. Get the stats and see them. So it wasn't that we weren't trying to play football and play through them and got crosses in, we just didn't score. Now, Gary Breen with us. You there, Gary? I am. Wasn't very good, was it? It wasn't very good, no, but it is what it is in terms of the 10 points. Listen, if we'd have beaten them 6 or 7 nil, what difference ultimately would it have made? Would we then said that whoever scored the goals was certain to play in these big games in the autumn? No, I don't think they would have done so. I understand the frustration, of course I do, on the back of what was a wretched couple of seasons for us. That we felt it was a real good feel-good factor and then it, just emptied, it kind of emptied out on that performance alone. But listen, the whole crutch of the matter is can we get into a position to qualify? And we have. Now, at the same time, I am going mad about the fact that we've got 10 points because we should have 10 points. There's no mm. doubt about it. If we had 10 points from, the, from the, the last four games as opposed to the first four games, then I'd be thinking happy days. But listen, it's, the work's all still to, to, still to be done. We put ourselves in a position to do it. There's no doubt there's a lot of work needs to be done in terms of improving this team because this is a team that scored four goals in nine games. You know, It's not suddenly going to start scoring five and sixes. This is the problem we have. Ball retention, uh, and again, a problem. Um, and just finding someone who can put the ball in the back of the net. So, listen, uh, it was what it was. We had the three points. It, it was a disappointing evening, but the, the whole crutch of this group will be decided um, at the beginning of next season. You're right when you say there's um, a lot of work to do with the team. The problem is there's not a huge amount of time to do that work. And I suppose there was a hope that given they had a two, three week camp in Portugal, that might have been the window in which Mick could really have shaped something, especially after the very positive performance against Georgia. So in that sense, it's a bit of a letdown, I think. To ask a, a simple question with a complicated enough answer, and we can, we can tease all of this out, why didn't Ireland create more chances, do you feel? I think they... Well, we Clear cut chances. Create, well, they had 30 opportunities. So no, 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 but like, not, like, like one of them yeah, was, know, you know, know it was, it was Duffy on. shooting from like 45 yards. Yeah, I don't know if you've so ever, I'm, I'm, you know, exactly. yeah. So no, I'm, not I'm, being, I'm talking. I'm, clear, I'm, I'm talking yeah. clear cut chances. You know, like I'm talking of, uh, open up Gibraltar and them. You know, last yeah. ditch tackles, that kind of territory. Not good enough. Not good enough from the players. As simple as that. I know the drills that they've gone through from Terry Connor, and Mick, and what it was expected. Did you see the cut of Mick at half time? Yeah, he was seething. Yeah. Terry Connor tried to start a conversation with it, and and soon decided that wasn't a way to go. Just let Mick 
just have a couple of minutes on his own. So, listen, ultimately the buck stops with the players. And I, I would have been always one of those who stuck up for those players under Martin O'Neill because I was led to believe and I heard a lot that the preparation wasn't being done. Now, I'm not going to then say now that it's it's the manager's fault again because I know the preparation would have been done. So there's going to be a stage now where these players have to take responsibility. They have to perform better than what they did. Mm. And even last night, you've seen someone like Jeff Hendricks, who I'm a massive fan of. I really am. And I know the frustration is that everyone keeps harping on about this Euro 16 form. But the, the reality is he hasn't played in that position very often since. Last night, again, he plays in a two. And he's just too loose on the ball. Gives it away too far too easily. Mm. But what I would say is that you said Mix had three weeks now to prep this team. There's no way that this team is going to play 4-4-2 again in, in, in any of those four games next season. So we may well say that, yeah, he's been prepping them, but we're just, we won't play that system. We won't play two centre-forwards. Even if Shane Long comes back in mm. and, and McGoldrick's done well, they won't both play. So you don't they think they would have spent much time on this scenario? No, I, I, I think they will have done, but I don't think going forward... The fact that it's failed, they're going to have to rip up everything they've been planning for those four games in the autumn. I don't think that for one moment. Mm. If you're breaking down a team, I suppose, I mean, we, you're kind of, broadly speaking, you're going to have two ways. You can go through them or go around them. And McCarthy said yeah. afterwards the plan was to go around them. So let's just talk yeah. about the two flanks for a moment. Uh, Stevenson and McLean haven't really done all that much in an attacking sense over these three games. I'm curious for your thoughts on them. I, I appreciate McLean putting that very good cross towards the end. But just park yeah, that for no, one no, moment. In, in general terms, I'm not so sure we're getting that much down the left-hand side. No, but listen, this is, this is, will, will be a debate, no doubt about it. And, it, it's, it, and I think I, what we'll add to that is probably people saying, can we fit Brady in there somehow? And certainly James was someone I'd identified and saying, listen, he might struggle under Mick because of the fact that we'll be looking for more attention. We won't be defending deep in 10 men around the edge of our box and then relying on his power mm. to get us up the pitch, which, which he'd done so brilliantly for us. And, you have to say that James had a difficult couple of games against Gibraltar, to be perfectly honest. I think the right back in the first game gave him a, a, a tough old game. So I would expect him to come back stronger. I think Stevens has looked good defensively. I think in terms of looking after the ball, he wasn't alone, wasn't particularly good with it last night. But that, I think you could say that for the majority of the team. Sure. You know, I've, I've highlighted Hendrick, but even so many of the players, wasteful in possession, giving the ball away, which you don't expect. And you have to give some context. We should be able to keep the ball off of a team like that. And not being different. I've been in scenarios like that where you're playing lesser nations yeah. and the difficulties you face. I mean, I look back to that prior to qualifying for the World Cup and we played against Andorra and we were actually 1 0 down at, at Lansdowne and we're thinking, oh no, and I think I was captain on the night. And the sheer panic then, I think Kev got us a goal back within a couple of minutes. Yeah. But even then, when we got to 2 1, I think I, I actually, yeah, I got a goal late on and, and I remember my mum saying to me, we didn't seem particularly happy. And when the camera pans on me, you can hear me actually swearing, saying, Thank God for that. And so there's difficulties. We no, look back sure. at even Jack's iconic team, Liechtenstein, you know, not being able to score a goal against them and undoing every, all the good work that they had done. But it happens. No, at I the accept same that. Time, I accept that. They're, they're, they're tricky they games. They should still and, be able to do better. Yeah. They and should I, still I, be able to do better. I, I, for the vast majority of Irish games, they're not going to have the majority of the ball. They had 71% possession last night. It's not like they're going to have to become very adept at breaking down a team who parked the bus. Manchester City will have to become very good at that. Ireland won't, and that's the reality. So the game does have a context. To go back to the left-hand side, though, you know, you talked about McLean maybe being in danger. You think when he first arrived on the scene, 2011, 2012, I mean, he was just, you know, the power, knock it by a defender, whip across in, that was his selling point. You think of the goal against Austria away, exactly what you're talking about, Ireland defending deep and that power. Like, he's 30 years old now, so that power is going to be on the wane. Has he like developed the other sides of wing play? Like, is he under genuine threat now for his place? Well, only because of how I expected Mick when he initially came in that we'd, we'd be looking to play on the front foot, look after the ball better. So you're thinking, well, that's not necessarily his strengths. But if you're asking me, has James got the ability to to adapt his game? And I think yes. And, and, and coupled with the fact of how much it means to Ireland, he's, he's not going to just let his position become vulnerable. He's going to fight for everything. And mm. I can imagine in training that he's... He's tearing around, cutting people in half. Which but you see, sorry, that, that's, that, that's, not him, that's not him adapting his game. Like, he's, he's 30. I'm talking about no, I know him, him and Ender Stevens in a 2v2. They can't seem to manoeuvre much. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about... Uh, I was talking to even Kev Kilban last night. He says he always watches the wingers. And, like, you get to a certain age, you have to yeah. adapt. Your, you know, you have to make different runs. You have to pick moments. I'm not sure we're, no, gonna, no, I'm I'm not listen, sure we're getting that. 
No, I know what you're saying. And if you talk about two of the, the best iconic left wingers we've ever seen, John Barnes, Ryan Giggs, adapting as they got older, became central players, being able to play inside. Well, listen, that's the challenge. Mm. You have to see if he can now. If he, if Mick wants him to do that and he can't do it, then we'll look for other um, avenues. No doubt about that. And that's how mm. it should be. But we're looking at scenarios again. And I, I, a lot of the talk again in terms of is, can we shoehorn Matt Doherty into this team? And why can't he? Look how well he's playing in the Premier League. And I've been a massive admirer of what he has done. But Mick will make that decision. It's either Matt Doherty or Seamus Coleman. That's the decision. Now, people will say, well, no, nah, he should be out picking. Well, Mick's had tougher decisions. I said this to you before, Joe. Mm. Yeah, Gary Kelly, Steve Finnan, and um, Stephen Carr. And all three are better than Seamus Coleman and Matt Doherty, in my opinion. And he made a decision. Now, people will say, well, listen, why can't he find a way? If he feels that Matt Doherty can play in another position, Mick has done that before as well. Mm. Because if you think about the 2002 World Cup, Gary Kelly nailed down that right wing position yeah. in front of Steve Finn. And so he can do it. Mick's obviously looked at it and made a decision. He's not sure he can now. If we look at Matt Doherty, in terms of how good he is for Wolves, it's because he's got two central midfielders who don't give the ball away. That's the difference. Moutinho, Neves, allows him to get up the pitch and affect the game. So we don't quite have that right now. And we have... The reason I say we won't play two centre forwards is because we've got two centre midfielders who can't play on their own in there. There's no doubt. We, and yeah. In fact, I don't think we've had any who can play in a flat two in centre midfield since the World Cup yeah. in um, Japan. We don't have players of that ability. We need a third man in there. Okay, so... It in that context, and I appreciate that's a big difference to Wolves, where he has those type of technical players. Yeah. But that notwithstanding, he was you know a contender for the Premier League Team of the Year. We don't have many of those players. It, did it seem to you a bit premature to write off the Coleman Doherty experiment on the basis of you know one game on a windy astroturf in Gibraltar? Uh, like, do you do you look at, do you look at Doherty and think there's no way he could do it on the right wing? Oh no, I think he could do it. No, okay. I, I genuinely do, and, and and I'd liken it to the fact that if he played in that right wing position. It would be more akin to the position you see him for Wolves. He's always in that advanced area. So there's no reason in my mind why he couldn't do that. Mm. But right, why Mick's not picking him, I don't know. Okay. And I know people are saying Mick knows him well. We brought him over from Ireland initially. But this is a very different Matt Doherty to the one that Mick brought over all those years ago. Yeah. Uh, Seamus Coleman's final ball wasn't great either last night. I mean, again, you can't really put that at Mick's door. Like, Coleman needs to get on top of that. That wasn't, that no. wasn't good. So, so they're the two flanks, if we're talking about attacking them. So that, that was what was going on down the two wings. Through the middle, we were doing the game last night. Stewie Byrne was on commentary for us. And you know, he just made a very simple point. But, you know, so often Coleman was higher, Stevens was high. And you might have had four Irish players, you know, up high along the Gibraltar defence, you know. And... To give an example, I'm not picking on McLean here, but just say he's popped into my head. So say, you know, a ball might be played into McLean somewhere up high. And instead of in a Wes Houlihan way, trying to take the ball on the turn and being in on the defence and trying to slip a pass through for someone, what we're seeing too many Irish players uh, do is take a heavy and very safe touch back towards their own goal. Gibraltar player can push up on them and then it's another pass back to a centre midfielder or worse again sometimes to a Duffy or a Kyo. And, you know, geez, I, I, we're never going to break down a defence, it seems, by going through. And we, we really do seem to lack the technicians in there to, you know, be brave enough, Gary, to, to take it on the turn and, you know, be in and try, try and slip someone in. Like, if, geez, if you see another Irish player take a touch way back into his almost, back into his own half and safe and away, like it's keeping the ball, but it's not doing anything with it. No, and it's, it's not disturbing the back four, of course, it is. And it's actually a boost for you as a defender against good teams if they are playing back. But you're quite right to identify that. It was a period in that first half position where Jeff Hendricks gets the ball. And I stopped it last night. I was covering the game myself. And we had four of our players up against their back four in a dead straight line. Yeah. So easy to mark at any level. That's the easiest thing to mark. And as you step up with every level that you play, the biggest difference in level is that the players ask questions of you and they drop into holes and then you've got to make a decision, then they exploit it that way. And I just felt last night that I think the players probably got sucked into the fact that we were saying we're going to score goals. Everyone was desperate to score goals. They were getting in advanced areas and they were lacking a little bit of know-how. And mm. that was what is frustrating for me. And 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 likewise, even against Denmark, I felt at times that we do lack those guys who are problem solvers on the pitch in that for the first 25 minutes against Denmark, I was really impressed with our shape. That midfield three really disciplined. It was a staggered shape. The defence was a high line, so there was no space in 10. Then suddenly, after 25 
25 minutes, Ericsson said, you know what? I'm not getting any ball in 10. I'm going to drop deep into four. Yeah. And rather than saying, okay, go and do that. We'll keep our shape. We went chasing him. And as a result, then the gap became big. Their, mid, their right wing and left wing was stepping into the 10 area. Our defence rever- reverting to tight, panicking, dropping. And I just felt at that time, I'm thinking, come on, you guys. Now, this is an experienced group of guys. Lots of caps there. And then I started thinking, well, listen, what would our team... And, and the big difference is, is, and I go back to that Andorra game where I was saying where we mm. won the down. We didn't panic because we had so many players who were capped in, problem solvers. And at times, I think that this group of players really needs to learn that they have to solve the problems themselves. It's mm. all well and good waiting for the managers. And I've said that to you time and time again. Yeah. Mick will we'll give them the ideas on the training ground. But you have to be able to problem solve yourself in games. Any positives in the night? Like um, Mick said he thought Callum Robinson was very good, said he thought he was excellent in the game. Yeah. I had to take him off because he hadn't been playing. He had a, a hamstring injury. Um, Horan's left foot's going to be a useful weapon, you know, from play and, 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 from, and from set pieces. Was there anything for you? Listen, I'd agree with that. I, I, I wouldn't say um, Robinson was excellent. I thought he was good. Yeah. I expected him to be at, uh, against the, the calibre he's playing against. Hurahan, um again, that left foot deep from deep, lovely switches of play. Want him to maybe break a few more lines in terms of hurting people in that 10 area. But again, were there options to hit in there? Probably not because the lads were too, too eager to get in advanced areas and, and too easy to pick up. Yeah. But. I will give it context, Joe, and I can understand the mood is really dampened down a little bit, but come on, man. You know what I mean? The work was always going to be in the second part of this campaign yeah. in, in, in the start of next season. It was never going to be in this. We just got ourselves in a decent position. We're ready to go. Mix happy enough. This is what he would have hoped for. In an ideal world, yeah, we're expansive. We're knocking it about. We're scoring yeah. goals, but... That, that that's not likely to happen. No, I, like I wasn't that downhearted leaving yesterday because I just thought that this no. type of scenario is an irrelevance for this team. Like it just is whether they win six nil, which is not likely, or exactly. whether they do what they did. But you know, under exactly. this under this manager with this group of players, frankly, the reality is the plan will to be to try and win the remaining games at best by about one nil. That is kind of where we are. That is unfortunately the reality. I, I mean, maybe you're more optimistic than that. I don't know. No, listen, I don't expect us to be beating anyone's threes and fours. It's just not going to be that way. And, and Mick was, you know, he's experienced enough to know. And and I think everyone's a bit annoyed that how pragmatic he was, not how pragmatic or how dogmatic he was in terms of saying, well, listen, it's 10 points. Yeah. But what do you want him to do? Put loads of spin on it and say, listen, were well, they're inexperienced lads, blah, blah, blah. He's not trying to kid anyone. He knows the Irish football public are a knowing bunch. We, know, we, we can see through our own eyes like it wasn't good enough. Yeah. And we expect a massive improvement come the autumn. And I, I think we will do because ultimately a lot of these lads now will go away. The points are on the board as they should be. Listen, I'm not, I'm not like for one moment thinking half the job's done. I think there's a lot more work to be done. Mm. But we have a, um, a recovery over the summer, regroup. You're hoping then that the likes of Brady can come back with a bit more energy because I know he's been fit for a long time, but because he's always been chasing that injury, I just feel he needs to step away from football, re-energise, come yeah. back on a level playing field where everyone improves it and really put a marker down. And there's a lot of those players that I would, would say that to. Hogan up front leading the line, frustrating at times. It was offside quite a bit, but he's always trying to get in there. But I think he was maybe just three or four inches away from probably getting his couple of goals. And you have to say that that's probably because he hasn't played enough football regularly. So, listen, we're in a position... I, I don't think it's as doom and gloom it should be, bearing in mind we have um, won a game 2 0. Yeah, okay. There's a degree of um, realism about it and also wanting the team to do uh, better, I suppose. I mean, do you know what's going to settle this great debate between players versus managers? And, you know, you talk about how, in some aspects, the performance wasn't that different to what we saw under Martin O'Neill. And I would agree with you, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a million miles away uh, last night to what we saw at times under O'Neill. When, and we're 12 months away and there's plenty of time to talk about it in the meantime, when Stephen Kenny comes in and really says 100% this is the philosophy and this is what we're going to try and do, then we're really going to see what potentially these players can produce. Until then, Mick McCarthy, understandably, is in a sprint. He's eight games, all he cares about is winning. I get that. He was always going to be pragmatic. Yeah, listen, I, 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 I'm always finding this one about Stephen Kenny quite difficult to kind of digest in yeah. terms of philosophy. Everyone comes in with a new philosophy, no experience at this level. Let's let's have it right. He's no experience in terms of what this team can potentially do. And as a and and, and even as a young coach, you, you initially go in and you're like, and I'm not. I know he's an experienced 
experienced coach. I'm not just saying it, but philosophy is always this word. Very few managers can play to their philosophy like Pep and, and Klopp. And even to a certain extent, Klopp has had to be a bit more pragmatic. And the reason why they won the Champions League and went so close to the Premier League is because he went away from that season before of like, we'll attack, you attack, and far more control to the extent that people were criticising that front three saying, well, listen, why are they not scoring as many goals? Mm. Because they're being more pragmatic. I and know, that is I know. the reason but you know, why do you know what, they've though? been so we, successful. We saw Dundalk play a brand of football that Irish teams do not play and that people would have said, in Europe, away to European teams, Irish teams don't do that. And he had an Irish team the other week scoring four goals against China. We don't score four goals very often. So, you know what, I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I understand what you're saying as well. Yeah, listen, I've no doubt about that. But I counter that, Joe, by yeah. saying, if you want to see about a philosophy and an Irish team playing football, go back and watch us playing in Amsterdam and going 2 nil up against the Dutch. Yeah. No Ireland team has played like that. Now, you're talking about philosophies. That's what Mick McCarthy can do mm. when he's given time and he's got the players. Mm. Now, it's all in good. If you don't have that, you can't play like that now everyone's talking about why can't we play like that Irish people that give it a last jack and high tempo press them that World Cup team and the three years maybe two three years going into it was nothing like that that was a controlled possession based football team mm. now I know we had far better players but Mick cultivated that team and I don't think he gets enough credit for it in terms of the fact that I know Brian done a great job in terms of developing those young players who came through but look at how many players Mick actually took from under 21s, even younger players who didn't even play 21s mm. and went on to have really, really strong island careers. I think at times with Mick's persona or the perception of Mick, I think too many people are ignoring that if he's got the players, he's probably one of the most expansive managers mm. you're going to get. And I know because as a centre half, if we had a throw in, I was expected to drop to the back of my 18 yard box, get the ball and start play from there. So. Yeah. Listen, I just want a little bit of facts here in terms of when people keep talking about philosophies. Yeah, I totally agree with that last point. It's been overlooked a little bit. I think that team played some great football. You can't separate it from the manager and then blame the manager when it doesn't happen. So, uh, listen, our time is short. I guess we'll talk when we talk. Thanks, Emil. Thanks, Joe. Good luck, mate. See you. Alrighty, welcome back. So I think we'll leave Republic of Ireland Gibraltar for one evening. I should mention Off the Ball is back on the road again in association with Super Value from St. Bin. I might just do that again. I'll keep rolling. Alrighty, you're welcome back. So I think we'll leave uh, Republic of Ireland Gibraltar talk for one evening. I should tell you Off the Ball is back. We're on the road again in association with Super Value. We're coming from St. Finbar's GAA Club in 